Hey guys, Brett Kelly here for another Tuesday Tech Tip at 45 Drives, and today I'm talking about expanding Ceph clusters and the things you gotta watch out for. So Ceph, you've heard us talk about Ceph before, but Ceph is an infinitely scalable um, storage platform. It's self-healing, it, it, it rearranges its own data, um, to keep everything self and even across all the hard drives in the many node cluster that is a Ceph storage platform. Um, and these are great. These are all things that you want in a self-healing, self-living storage organism, if you will. Um, but when this can get you into trouble is when you go to add a bunch of new space into this cluster. And as you can kind of see where I'm going here, um, I like to use the analogy of a bathtub and uh, suspend your belief for a minute here. but picture this you've got a bathtub and it's full of water and it's got its water to a certain amount and you need to add more water to this bathtub so what do you do you got to add more volume to it same thing with the Ceph cluster so what do you do you add another storage node in there so this is where I said suspend your belief take your bathtub and just imagine now that it's a foot longer so you've added all that new volume to it what happens the water just immediately rushes in and redistributes itself, right? So for a bathtub, whatever, that's fine. But for a Ceph cluster, the same thing's gonna happen. If you just put a node in and just say, okay, add, all the data is just gonna immediately start <laughs> rushing into the other node. And it's gonna start moving data around and all of a sudden your, your network pipes are full of not client IO into the cluster, it's the data freeing itself into the new space. This is what we want essentially but we don't want to disrupt client IO. So how we avoid this, how we build, a, how we uh, um, stop this rush of data flying into the new server is let's go back to our bathtub analogy for a minute. So before you magically put this one foot extension on it, let's imagine you build a little dam wall and it's just holding the water here. We do the same thing in Ceph by setting a couple flags that say do not distribute your data, leave where it's at. So what happens then is we can build a little dam and we can build our tub out. And all of a sudden we've got all this fresh new volume that we could put water into, data. And okay, it's there, it's all stood up, perfect. Do we take the dam away? No, nah, we just open a little door in it and we let the data. So instead of a big rush of a flood, you get a good kind of, there, now I'm even again. And uh, well, that's kind of how you expand your Ceph cluster. You put a little fake dam in, set a couple flags that say don't move your data, add your new storage nodes in, drives, storage nodes, whatever it is, however you choose to expand your cluster. And then you take the flags off and build a little door rather than taking the whole dam off. And it'll just slowly trickle charge in the background as trickle charge, <laughs> redistribute, if you will, um, in the background as your client IO remains untouched. All right, and uh, well, fun fact on theme today, bathtubs and storage servers, um, don't bring your Storinator in the tub with you. Make sure you keep your Ceph clusters and your tubs completely separated. Although they're very similar in analogies, keep them separated. Okay, so analogies and fun facts aside, the technical details on how to uh, avoid the bathtub tidal wave of expanding your Ceph cluster is available on our knowledge base, knowledgebase.45drives.com. Uh, we'll put a link in the description, and as always, questions, comments, um, anything at all, leave in comment, uh, social media, we'd love to hear from you. Hope you enjoyed another Tuesday Tech Tip, and we'll see you next week.